plants have been grown in lunar soil for the first time ever. I, I've got to ask, what, what would the soil be like? Yeah, and this is the thing is when the Apollo missions took um, rocks and samples back, they've stored most of it. Now, we do know lunar soil is similar to Earth, but it's weaker in a lot of nutrients. So there's a lot less nitrogen. Um, there is some iron in the soil. Now, we get that on Earth. Uh, there is carbon in the soil as well. So we know that that's similar, but it's also different. Now, again, none of this is surprising, but the real question has always been that we've always grown analog. So we've made samples based on what we think the composition was. They actually took direct moon dust that has been sealed for 50 or so years, put it in these vials to grow plants. Now, this is a really big step because they didn't you know, use fertilizer. They didn't add supplements to the ground they just said is there at least enough to get it started because if they can at least see there's enough of the ratios of the critical elements in the soil to get these plants growing then we can add the things that may it be missing and people are looking at how do we fertilize moon dust can we add things like nitrogen to the soil to boost any growth so there's definitely the start of what has become a very important topic of as we send humans back to the moon making sure that there is food they can grow in the moon dust because we don't want to bring dirt from the earth because that's a lot of weight to bring yeah absolutely well i'll be very curious to see how the plants actually grow and and what yeah. they're like brad uh, now the biggest quake on mars recording a magnitude five has been detected yeah mars quakes uh have been monitored now for about a couple of years since nasa's insight mission landed uh in 2018 and we're starting to find a lot of interesting things. So we found a lot of these Mars quakes, but most of them are, are weak, magnitude three or four. But we also know that we expect them to get bigger. So again, if we think about uh, earthquakes like Mars quakes, we use a kind of this magnitude or Richter scale where a five is 10 times more powerful than a four. And we do know, again, even from the, uh, the Victorian earthquake uh, a number of months ago, that when you start to get into the magnitude fives, you start to actually get some real rumbling going on. So this magnitude five quake was one that uh, was actually quite sizable. And this is obviously going to be not just interesting for understanding the history of the planet, because we want to know, is it active underneath Mars surface? Why is it apparently less active than Earth? And this tells us a lot about potentially what's underneath and the history of Mars. But if you're also going to start sending people to Mars and they're going to be going on to places that have magnitude five or so earthquakes or Mars quakes, you need to be able to build structures that survive and withstand that. So this is really critical stuff, not just to knowing Mars, but future planning for astronauts. Absolutely. Brad Tucker, we have to leave it there. Thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. Take care.